We'll call to order the uh, September 18th meeting of the Tarpon Springs Planning and Zoning Board. Uh, would someone like to lead the Pledge of Allegiance for us? and mission of the Tarpon Springs Planning and Zoning Board is to conduct public hearings on the items that come before it. The Planning and Zoning Board has reviewed the evidence in the agenda packet for each item on the agenda this evening, including the application materials and the staff report. The board will consider that evidence along with any new evidence or testimony provided at the public hearing. The board will consider all of the information provided at this hearing in accordance with the quasi-judicial procedures by which it is bound. I'll ask the city attorney to explain these quasi-judicial procedures at the appropriate time. The board uses these procedures to judge whether the application meets the intent of the city's adoptive comprehensive plan and future land use map and whether the application conforms to the city's currently adopted land development code and zoning atlas. The board will render a decision on each item in the form of a recommendation to the board of commissioners who will take the final action on the item. The general hearing procedure for each item called by the chair is as follows. Staff presentation, applicant presentation, affected party presentation, public input, staff and applicant rebuttal, and finally board motion, discussion and vote. Uh, can we call the meeting to order and have a roll call, please? Mr. Seaman? Here. Mr. Kuskudis? Here. Mr. Vesey? Mr. Zambillis? Here. Ms. Francis? Here. Mr. Rockline? Here. Ms. Early? Here. That brings us to item four on our agenda. Uh, application 23-58 has been deferred to a date certain of November 20th, 2023. Uh, and that brings us to item five, the quasi-judicial announcement and swearing in of speakers. Would our attorney please do that for us? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The matters before the City of Tarpon Springs Planning and Zoning Board are quasi-judicial in nature. In a quasi-judicial proceeding, the Board's function is to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the City of Tarpon Springs Code of Ordinances. This is a legal decision regarding the application before the Board. The Board may only consider evidence that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues arising from the application and the applicable code sections. If the ev evidence demonstrates that the application meets the criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances, then the Board is required by law to grant the applicant's request. If the evidence demonstrates that the application does not meet the code criteria, then the Board is required to deny the applicant's request. Any and all persons providing testimony at this hearing are required to do so under oath. All persons testifying at this hearing must give their name, address, and indicate whether or not they have been sworn for the record prior to proceeding with their testimony. All testimony and questioning must address matters that are relevant and material to the, to the application before the City's Planning and Zoning Board. Any board members who have disclosures such as ex parte communications or conflicts of interest, please make your disclosures at the beginning of the hearing. The following is the established procedure which will be followed at this quasi-judicial proceeding. First, city staff will present its testimony and evidence regarding the application, and the applicant will be given the opportunity to ask questions and cross-examine city staff and any city witnesses. The applicant will then have the opportunity to present witnesses and evidence, and the city will have the opportunity to cross-examine the applicant and any of the applicant's witnesses. Then members uh, in favor of or opposing the application will be given the opportunity to present their testimony and evidence. Then the applicant and the city will be given the opportuni opportunity to present rebuttal and a closing statement for summary. Then the city will close the public hearing for the board's deliberation. 
At this time, anyone who's going to be presenting testimony, please stand to receive the oath. All right, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth on the matters before the City of Tarpon Springs Planning and Zoning Board this evening? I do. All right, thank you. Please remember to state your name, address, and indicate that you've been sworn when you come up to speak. All right, that brings us to item number six on our agenda, application 2328 for property located at 1750 South Pinellas Avenue. This involves ordinance 2023-14 for annexation, 2023-15 for future land use map amendment, and 2023-16 for rezoning. Uh, we will discuss those items for the most part together, but have three separate votes when it's time, correct? Yes, that is correct. All right, can we have the staff presentation, please? Yes, good evening, Pat McNeese, Principal Planner. Okay, this is a proposed annexation for property located at 1750 South Pinellas Avenue. And um, it's uh, 1.3 acres in size, and it is currently, uh, this is the site on uh, South Pinellas, Alt 19. Um, it, it's, uh, Probably, I don't know, some, I was trying to think of some of the things that are near, right next door is Quest Diagnostics. Across the street is the, the La Siesta Apartments, the old hotel. That's the area we're talking about. So uh, as you can see, um, the, um, there are city and county properties here. The shaded ones are in the city. And the predominant future land use and zoning along Alt-19 is commercial, so commercial general. And then in the county, um, usually C2, and in the city, it's highway business and general business. This is a, a better uh, oblique aerial of the site. I don't have the boundaries, but basically it's this rectangle here. Uh, the uses on site are um, auto sales and a salon at the front and there's various uh, storage and other uses in the back. This is just a picture from Google Street View of the site with the auto, showing the auto sales in the salon building. So again, this is 1.3 acres in size. It's in the commercial general county future land use and the um, C2 County Zoning, General Commercial and Services. We propose to bring it in to the equivalent Tarpon Springs uh, Future Land Use and Zoning, which would be Commercial General and Highway Business. And again, uh, you've got the uses there. Um, so we want to go through, I'm going to go through all the criteria for all three ordinances. The first is the annexation. Um, as you may remember, your annexation review criteria changed with the recent change of that section of the code. Um, that wasn't codified in the Unicode yet, so you do have a copy of that ordinance um, in your packet right after the staff report showing what the changes were. You now have five criteria. The first remains the same. Uh, this is adjacent to the city, and it will not create an enclave. Um, the second one refers to the interlocal um, service agreement that the city has with the county, and what that agreement defines as a type A enclave. This property is not in one of those, so that one does not apply. Uh, the third has to do with city public facilities available to the property. Um, facilities are available, and the city has the ability to serve the property upon an annexation. The reason for the request here was to retire an existing septic tank and hook up to city wastewater services. 
The property has been on city potable water services since 1994. So the idea was to uh, hook up to wastewater. Um, any applicant was um, directed to go ahead and apply for annexation. And uh, she is actively now, with that application, uh, retiring to septic tank and hooking up to uh, the wastewater service. Um, so uh, the other services that are available to the, to the property would be um, law enforcement, uh, fire EMS, and of course transportation. Trans uh, the road is a DOT road, so that's a state road. Stormwater, I, I don't know that there are any facilities on site. I had it in here somewhere. This property was built, I wanna say 1973, anyway, in the 70s. So uh, there's no facility discernible, but of course any future development would have to develop their own on-site stormwater. Um, this uh, site has an active code enforcement case on it at Pinellas County. Uh, we received that email uh, communication that is in your packet. Um, so uh, that case would transfer, or we would have to um, uh, come to a resolution on a case in the city if this property were annexed. And that would involve obviously city staff, but mainly um, our law enforcement because that's where our code enforcement department is housed. Um, so that covers number four. And, and I think I'd like to read um, standard number four, just because it's new and, and just to remind you what it says. So, so criteria number four it says, the history or status of any Pinellas County code enforcement actions or violations that may cause an undue burden on the city. Such actions include, but are not limited to, unpermitted construction, FEMA violations, non-conforming uses, and illegal or prohibited uses. So I think with this criterion, you, you would consider whether you feel that this may be an undue burden. So, you know, that, unlike some of your other that are pretty cut and dried, for example, number one, yeah, it's continuous, it's not an enclave. This one is, is something for you all to consider and judge whether you think um, this affects uh, the annexation. So, and then number five, um, as far as consistency with the comp comprehensive plan, um, the uh, uses that are uh, listed as potential unpermitted uses in the county's email. Um, we don't know the details of what all those are, the extent and all that. We didn't get all that detail. But those include, as far as we know, unpermitted paving, um, maybe some commercial fishing storage type activity on site and outdoor storage that doesn't comply with the, with the county code. Um, it appears that, it, that those uses would not comply with the, with the city code either. Like I say, we don't know all the details, but those would then be inconsistent with your, your CG category of comprehensive plan and with the zoning when we get to that. So that's your annexation criteria. Um, the uh, commercial general designation is consistent with, with what the county has. So that would be bringing it in at the right uh, future land use. It's also consistent with the countywide map, which already designates this uh, property as retail and services. Um, but again, the unpermitted uh, uses don't appear to comply with the comprehensive plan. And then for the rezoning, remember your, your um, future land use is a legislative decision should you decide to adopt that future land use. Now you're looking at is the zoning, that's we're back to quasi-judicial, is the zoning consistent with, with that? So highway business is consistent with a commercial general uh, future land use designation. And the allowable uses for, for future, what the property would be put to under highway business 
are appropriate to that area. And um, well, we maybe uh, if if you need to, I'll flip back to the zoning map so you can see the surrounding area is a bit of a mix, but it, it, it's all different commercial offices, that sort of thing, not too much residential. Um, but this would be consistent with that. Um, one thing to note, we have um, a table for your future land use um, standards on page five of eight of your staff report and the rezoning table on page six of eight. Um, this rezoning would reduce the scope of allowable uses to some extent. It would reduce the density and intensity, um, the impervious surface, and actually the height. So our standards are a little more stringent than the county um, in this, these um, comparable commercial zones. Um, the amendment would provide for the efficient orderly growth as it would bring the parcel into the city under an appropriate designation. So future for the future, this would be an appropriate designation. Um, this is a property, frankly, I feel like at some point it's gonna redevelop. Uh, it's one of those types of properties. Um, so this, this would be appropriate uh, for that area. However, the current per unpermitted uses do not promote that orderly growth um, at this time. And then uh, the um, annexation won't, or the rezoning won't uh, unduly burden uh, the city as far as public facilities. We do have the capacity to serve. Um, but again, you'll need to consider for your annexation criteria whether that um, code case is gonna um, uh, be an issue for the city at this time. So staff is recommending denial of this annexation and then subsequently that would be the recommendation on the future land use and rezoning. Um, we feel like at least the code case should be resolved and, and the property cleaned up uh, to the extent that, that all those, those things are um, are resolved. I, di I didn't, it's in your staff report, I didn't mention, we do have an old survey in your packet, it's from the 80s, but it looks like the uses that are there that, that seem to be obviously legitimate uses are permitted in highway business and it appears that the building setbacks um, are met for that block building that was built in the 70s. So it looks like the property would conform We'd have to do more detailed research if the if if this were denied and the applicant came back later, we'd get more detail. Um, but at this time, we are recommending denial on this uh, application. And there were no responses to public notice. Are there any questions? Uh, yes, one. Uh, okay. Uh, I asked y'all earlier, but for the benefit of everybody, are, are you and Renee aware of? of any cases where this board in the BOC has ever approved the annexation of a piece of property that is in non-compliance with Pinellas County. The only property that jumps into mind is the, um, is it the marker 25? Uh, when we annexed across the river. And that was a very unique situation where um, in, in Pinellas County, I don't know if they had active code enforcement, but there was a lot of disparate, there was, there was problems between the, between the land use and the zoning designations in the county. When you overlaid those, there was really not any viable uses on the property. And so ultimately they sought to annex in and work with the city. That is the only one that jumps into my mind. And that was a pretty unique situation. And it came in with a restrictive covenant on it, so. Yeah. I, I, I do have some questions. If, if, is this sort of like a conditional denial? You're, de, you're, you're recommending denial because of existing issues with Pinellas County code enforcement? So, well, in other words, you're denying it and, and, and your recommendation of denial is A, clearing up some of these uh, issues with Pinellas County. 
Yeah, it's based on your new criteria. So if yeah. this were denied. So this is like a conditional denial. If, if those weren't of issue, then your recommendation may be different. Correct. Based on our new review criteria, yes. Okay. And, and you put in your package the, a highway business district uh, as far as a, as far as the permitted uses. So this, so alternate 19 is deemed a, a highway business. Yeah, um, go back. Uh, a good portion of alternate 19, um, those portions in the city that are red, yes. those are all highway businesses. This one's general business, a little less intense. And, so. and the, the reason I ask that is because if you look at number one on permitted use, is it talks about adult entertainment, and I just didn't know if they would be precluded based on how close residential uh, locations are that would, even though it's a permitted use, it would not meet the criteria for that particular use? Um, we can look it up. I'm not sure it's allowed on Alt-19. Well, uh, it's, it's just it's 19, under, under we'll highway look business, that up it's for a permitted you. use. Yeah. Yeah, so we can we can locate that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, you know, uh, that's that's number one issue. So, uh, being within 500 feet of residential, which this property is, automatically precludes it. Yeah, that was that was the answer to my question. I appreciate that. Um, you know, one of the things that that. Uh, we had talked about it in prior meetings. I think we talked about it uh, the last, uh, in, our, in our comprehensive uh, land use uh, workshop, was about being able to control our destiny uh, and, and, the, and the access points coming in and out of Tarpon Springs, uh, being able to have some say so or input in what goes on mm -hmm. in, 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 in our entrance to the community. Obviously, um, there are some significant issues that that if we did we did in fact approve this the annexation the onus would fall on the city to make them come in compliance. You know I don't I think we've got a lot. Well that's that's I guess that's for argument. But uh, um, so um, yeah and, and just mentioning real quick. Um, so, I, I did put something in the staff report. There was the last meeting or the one before the comp plan, we talked about a plan for, for Alt-19 and South Pinellas. And we feel like even if this isn't annexed in right away, we feel like the county would work with us on, on something because obviously there's, there's just a, a patchwork of, of incorporated and unincorpor unincorporated areas. So. We would want to work with the county so, on that plan, that corridor plan. And, and part and part of our discussion today is not just annexation, but but uh, uh, zoning, approving the zoning. So we would be able to either downgrade uh, the the type of zoning that that uh, um, you know from from highway business or whatever our zoning classification is to to something more. Con uh, um, consistent with what the entrance of our of our carpet springs would look like yes so um the question is i guess could you propose a uh, say a down zone to general business yeah. here tonight it, it, it's advertised as you know for highway business. It would um, need to be re-advertised. It would need to be re-advertised. Okay. I mean, if that's but if, but if we yeah. denied it and they, this came back, because I mean, you can certainly suggest to the applicant that that would be preferable if what, they're willing what, to downzone the property. And what are some of the permitted uses that are that would be different from from uh, highway business? Because it's a whole slew of of permitted uses. Um, <clears throat> I guess um, if More we're retail looking, or, uh, if we're looking at a down zone to say general business, yeah. I'm not sure I'd go lower than that unless it's really uh, the, the the big difference um, in the highway business district. You're going to have things like the car dealerships and the um, 
the car washes, the, um, the uh, gas stations, none of that, um, if I'm going off the top of my head here is, without pulling up the GB zoning, but in the general business district, we, we, we purposely many years ago took a lot of that stuff out of the general business district. So the general business is just a little more, it's general retail, you know, you have a smaller um, floor area, you know, ratio allowance. So it's just, it's, a, it's less intensive. Um, you don't have the opportunity for some, a lot of the conditional uses in highway business that would be things that would be a little heavier, like light industrial, things of that nature, um, storage uses and stuff. More uses that would lessen some of the traffic issues that alter the 19th. I, I hate to say that because, you know, I can you that. can still, well, but let me put that in context though. I mean, you know, could, could you put a, a restaurant with a, you know, in the general business district that could be a big generator? Probably so. So, I mean, we just have to be careful about saying across the board that something that's in GB is less of a traffic generator than something that might be in highway business. I, I think it's a little overly broad generalization, but. But aren't those considerations when we look at, at uh, in zoning is, is density and, and access to you know, generally we're looking at, you know, bringing in the property at a zoning designation that is equal or less intensive than, than what is allowed in Pinellas County. So, um, you know, we've, you know, generally speaking, we try to bring them in at something that's, that's close. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I, I know I'm not giving you the answer that you I, want. I know. That's okay. That's all right. All right. So I, I guess I'll surrender the floor. I have my questions oh, answered. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, I just had a, a little bit of a, what's the status update on the um, code enforcement? Have, are they, have this, has it not resolved as far as them paying fines or are they still act, actively doing um, uh, the um, file? Yeah. Uh, it, to the violation. If you just let me flip to that email, I believe that Mr. Crossan at Pinellas um, said that they had a meeting about it and perhaps the applicant can uh, expand on where she is. She, he says the county has open code violations on this property, the meeting was for compliance. They had done some extensive unpermitted paving in the front of the property and were using the rear of the parking lot for exterior storage as well as running what appears to be a commercial crabbing business. Um, we had a meeting with them in June about how to get into compliance. That, that's the extent of the information I got. It seems just like a, it, I mean, it's not just like leaving storage out. It sounds like running an entire business this seems like quite a big <laughs> violation <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just wondering if that was something that they had actually actively they're actively still doing it and then also came as an applicant yeah and i i haven't been to the property or walked to the back of the property Story. um so i don't know if they're still actively i mean this this aerial photograph was taken in january of 2023 <clears throat> so and, and the oblique that I showed you, that's when it was taken. So um, I don't know. The applicant might be able to tell you more about that. And the then as far here? as the retirement of the sewer, of the, of the septic tank, what's the, what's their timeline on that? Uh, she could probably answer that. Um, I believe she has applied, you know, she wanted to apply for the wastewater. So as soon as she submitted that application, we did that. I don't think she's completely operational yet. Maybe she can answer that. And then the abandonment of the tank goes through, I believe, Pinellas County um, Health Department. They have to abandon the tank so it's not usable anymore. You refresh my memory if I'm wrong. How old is the violation from a duration? Has it gone back years? I don't know. He didn't answer that question. It would be helpful. So. He just said that. they have active, so she could probably answer that when she's up. Any other questions for staff? Okay. Yep. And do you All right. so I, I did just want to clarify, you did testify that the 
violations that were listed by the county are also violations under the Tarpon Code of Ordinances, correct? They would be. They would be. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, would the applicant like to make a presentation? Uh, Doreen E. Sicardo, I live at 31 Baywood Drive, Palm Harbor, Florida, and this is in regard to 1750 South Pinellas Avenue, Tarpon Springs. A um, <clears throat> couple of things that I'll address. The first notice of violation was May 4, so it's not years, it was just a couple of months. Um, I do have a current survey, I just got that about three weeks ago. Um, and so the, the, when I got the parking lot paved, the paving company said, because we're not paving over anything that wasn't already paved and we're not changing the footprint that I didn't need a permit. And so I just went with that. For, so that was one of the things that they were saying um, that was I'm, I'm in violation for, but we're still working around that uh, because the county, I've been doing the steps with the county. Um, they want me now to get a site plan, but I'm not doing anything. My tenants did things and so, um, <coughs> but. You know, they want me to get a site plan for that. The crab trap uh, fellow that's renting from me, he's going to be putting his crab traps in the water uh, October 1st, and he, his lease is up in December, and he'll be leaving. So that would be one of the things that would be um, addressed and taken care of by December 1st. So, you know, that's when his lease is up, and he's not going to rent from me anymore. Um, and uh, one of my tenants had put up a fence, and... They put a concrete thing there and he didn't get a permit. So this is falling back on me. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm trying to get that squared away uh, with the county. Um, I, I'm working with Guy Shoemaker over there and he's been very helpful trying to give me all the lists. I do have a current survey I can present. I don't have it with me, but I do have that. I just got that. So it shows you trees, it shows elevation, it, sh it shows everything that's done on the property. And um, so I'm working on clearing up all the uh, the, the, you know, the violations one by one. And I was gonna ask about, because I didn't know that this was a change of, um, of the, uh, the zoning, because I didn't know what, what home, uh, what, what HB business that was, because C2, I knew that we, we can do basically anything except open air storage. And, um, and I really didn't wanna be downgraded for that. I didn't know whether that was part of it. I thought this was just annexation for the plumbing, which this uh, septic tank has been abandoned, um, but, and so that's been done. The hookup is already there, sewer and water. And it's, um, so that's already hooked up, paying for. Everything is done. Everything was inspected. Um, I'm still trying to get something from the plumbing company to tell me that, that, that it was done so I can have proof, because I don't have proof, but we are operational. So, um, so that's all taken care of. And, you know, because I had that done, they tore up the whole parking lot, I had that done before I got the parking lot repaved. So, um, and, but that's, but yeah, so we're working with the county to just, you know, whatever they want, I'm gonna do. Any questions for the applicant? Yes, um, so what are your tenants? What some of the, the okay, so I have, nature of their um, businesses? A, a beauty salon, which was there years ago, Okay, so that's that's the the, the uh, cement building that's there, and on the other side was a car lot, which they were there. I bought the property in 2011 and in, in November, and they started with me in December of 2011. It was that was my old tenant was car lot, so a new fellow bought the car lot, you know the the license for that, and he's just he just um, you know is doing so he bought the he bought the license from my previous tenant so i was just rent you know renting it to them and um you know but he did he put up a fence without getting a permit and he put a concrete block without getting a permit so i have to get that address because that was he did it and i didn't give him permission for that because i said just make sure you're doing it in compliance you know but obviously he did not but we'll work on that um so those are the only two tenants that 
crab and I crab have a storage. crab trap guy that's there, but his lease is up in December, and he's, he'll be leaving the property. He's not going to be re-renting. So in December, he'll be gone, but his crab traps right now are on the property because when season opens, he's going to be putting yeah, them in yeah, the water. I'm familiar with that. So, so, so all those crab traps will be gone from so there. So once he's gone, what are the future plans regarding... I was just going to leave it. Well, the car renter guy was going to rent that back piece, but because of all this trouble, he's not going to rent it anymore, which is fine. I'm just going to leave it blank until I so figure you're, it. So as I understand, your plans are you'll only have two tenants, the beauty right. salon and the car lot. Right. And all else to... Right. No future. Okay. Right, because I wasn't going to develop it. I was just doing, you know, renting it. So are you planning on being in violation with the crab traps throughout December? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> he's putting them in the water in like a week, you know, so the, so the crab traps will be gone, and then he just has a couple of, um, you know, like a bo one boat and, and like two empty trailers. So it's not, um, I mean, I don't know what else to do with him about, uh, he's looking for a place. He said if he could find a place earlier, he would, but he is putting them in the water October 1st, so... They'll be, they'll be out of that. I, I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank, thanks for your presentation, and thank you for your cooperation with the county to come in compliance quickly. I've been on both sides of the coin uh, many times uh, between homeowners and jurisdictions. Uh, a lot of times the, the owner uh, is left out of the, the loop, uh, doesn't I mean, it's okay, and it's still your responsibility as the property owner, but when you're not there 24-7, uh, things can happen. My, my concern is your future proposed use, once the violations are cleared up uh, with the county, and perhaps it would be more appropriate for transfer to our auspices, uh, I don't think it's our responsibility uh, as a city to inherit that adjudication at this time. But I think the most important thing is what do you propose going forward so that we can assess if it's something that we feel fits that area uh, for the future of Tarpon Springs. Well, and um, we don't want to restrict you. You know, it's up to you to tell us, not us to guess. Right. Uh, and that, and that, that's to come. And you may want to discuss that with, you know, various facets of uh, developers and, and other interests that you may have as far as use there. But that's the most important thing is not today and not tomorrow, but next year, next decade. I think that's the most important thing to, uh, to the city at this time. Well, once I fi finish all these violations, I, I was planning on selling it because I, I can't go through this constantly. <laughs> it's like worn out. So um, I, I just plan on putting it up for sale. And this way, I'm, I'm out of it. And Right, know. right. And understandable, and, and I commend you for being honest. Uh, but once again, it'll have to receive a designation once it transfers to the city. And that designation may affect your buyers and, and their well, potential uses. Well, that's why I uses. want to make sure, like, because I know C2 is pretty broad about what I can put there. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that this was part of a, of a zoning change, because I didn't get any paperwork or anything like that to, to know. I just thought it was the annexation for the septic to go to sewer. That's what I thought. So this came as a surprise that you that, that proposed zoning change, because I really bought the property for C2, knowing that I could basically do anything but open air storage. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Appreciate it. I, I have a question for, for Pat. Um, currently, currently, um, the, the, reading what you have right now, the maximum density is 24 units per, per acre. Mm -hmm. um, and, and is that consistent with the county is offering at this point? Is it how many um, units per acre is the county offering? The, the county, the, the commercial general in the county is 24 units per acre. So, so if, the, if we were to, let's say we, we uh, annex this property and then obviously we're moving forward with our future land use plan, uh, based on our future land use plan, that density drops to, uh, according to your chart, 15 units dwellings per acre that's correct all right so by and i'm just thinking this through by so by by denying the applic applicant um you know if they decide to stay within the county 
and under under the county's uh, zoning or uh, you know what they would the county would allow them to do is actually would be more intense as far as density than if if we brought annex them in and then once we adopt our future land use plan that would impact the the density uh, moving forward is yes that a fair I will. statement mm -hmm. Yeah, I will say, and I don't know if Renee would know more about this. I didn't research it in detail, but the county's commercial general category doesn't allow residential construction in what they call the coastal storm area. I did look at their map to see what the where you know where that is, and the rear portion of the property appears to be in that defined area. And the statement in the county code is, I believe it's 20% or more. So I'm not sure if this is eligible for residential. I think it's probably right on the borderline. It looks like maybe 20%, but it could be less than 20%. Well, well, then I, I'm, so I, I'm I, I think we would assume it could develop here's, residential. Here's why I'm confused, because I'm looking at your, your, your uh, current this is, this is a chart that you gave me um, where it says current uh, future land use, okay? And you, and you scroll down and it so talks about, and, and this is under um, what you gave us for this particular- uh, uh, The table on page table, five or uh, six. And, and it says 24 units per acre, mm -hmm. okay? And it doesn't say, and, and is that because under under the uh, com uh, com commercial general, why would they limit put dwelling units if it's commercial? They allow, um, and I'd have to look multifamily, just like we do in commercial general. Okay. Um, so that you can't have dwellings there. Yeah, and they're more consistent with the countywide plan, which is retail and services, okay. which is twenty four per acre. So. And it, would that be a perm let me go back to your chart? Is that a permitted use? In or is our, that a conditional in use? Highway business or? Well, I mean, you put highway business as okay. part of your attachment. That's the county. No, Nick, I'm looking at. Yeah. I'm looking um, at highway business district. Multifamily's conditional. Actually. Okay. Yeah, multifamily and highway business would be a conditional use if it came into the city. Because these, these permitted uses or and conditional uses, um, if if we annexed and, and 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 zoned it pursuant to the highway business district, that would be a, a conditional uh, use, basically. Yeah, I did print out the county table. Renee's going to look through it for me. It's very long. And there is a long list of uses. Ms. Sicardo's right. They, they have a, a large number of uses in, in this zoning. So we'll take a look and see if it's uh, no. by right or what it is at the county. Another quick question while you're looking then, just to be sure. They're, they, they have not been denied sewer. They have working sewer as is what I'm understanding. That's correct. And, so what would result so, here? So the only penalty here would be a temporary slight increase in the water and sewer rates. That's correct. And, until that. it came into compliance and could come back through us. Yes, she would have to apply for the annexation, right. but the surcharge rate would apply um, until it was annexed. Sorry. So yeah, the, the C2 zoning in the county um, multifamily is a permitted use by right, and it's an administrative review. It doesn't go to public hearings. So here it's a conditional. Here it's conditional, yes. And everything goes to public hearing. Thank you. Hmm. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? At this point, then, we'll begin the public hearing. Are there any members of the public wishing to speak on this item? You can be seated if you'd like to. Seeing none, uh, that brings us to closing public comments. Uh, 
I don't imagine anybody feels the need for rebuttal, staff or applicant. Uh, so uh, we'll bring this back to the board for consideration. Yes. Uh, um, what I would like to do is go ahead and read the ordinance by title. Um, the first one being the annexation ordinance. Ordinance 2023-14, an ordinance of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, annexing 1.3 acres, more or less, of real property located at 1750 South Pinellas Ave application, Avenue, application 23-28, providing for findings and providing an effective date. All right. Uh, I, I need a motion and second so that we can discuss. I'll make, I'll make a motion to approve the annexation so we can get it open for discussion. And I would second that, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, do we have board discussion? Yeah. Um, since I made it up. Uh, here's, here's uh, normally I would, I would embrace not normally, but I would typically try to embrace the staff recommendations, but here's my dilemma. My dilemma is this. There are certain code violations that I think need to be addressed, but more importantly, um, I look at the long term or the bigger picture. And when I look at the bigger picture, I, I look at uh, us as the city being able to control um, our destiny as far as you know, what we want to see coming into Tarpon Springs, whether it's density or, or other things that, that uh, you know, as, as Renee said, their, their list of permitted uses is quite extensive. Ours may not be as extensive. Uh, and, and going back to what you said as far as um, density, uh, you know, they're not subject to public hearing, uh, you know, 24 units, at least here ours is a conditional use. And that allows us a hand in, in, in shaping what I think, you know, we've talked about it before, that, that part of uh, coming into alternate 19, that quite frankly, some of it's an eyesore. And, and at some point in time, it may be developed. And I want us to have that ability con to control that process and not leave it at the hands of the county. And, and that's why, despite the code enforcement violations, which I think they would, they will have to be addressed anyways, that that's a small price to pay for our ability to control and manage uh, our future. I would tend to agree with you, but at the same time, it's the applicant that's coming here to be wanting it to be annexed in the city and there are code violations. So why not resolve the code violations and, and start off with a clean slate? Okay. If we know how long it's going to take to, because this process has to start all over again. And, and the applicant may have a change of heart once they have, uh, 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 they come into compliance and find out, hey, guess what? The, I want to sell it. And the person who may want to buy it looks at the, at the permitted uses and says, you know what? I could do a lot more with this property on the, on the permitted uses that may be contrary to what we envision uh, coming into this community. So uh, that's kind of where I, where I stand. And I kind of look at it differently, I guess, from, from my perspective. It, we're setting a precedent if we approve it that, that I think is something we haven't done before and we need to think closely about that before we would do that. I, I think it's bad policy so it's from from the at the higher level looking at it. I think it's bad policy to accept a uh, annexation on a piece of property that has outstanding code violations, and and for that reason, uh, I'll be against this item. I do want to say though, I would be the first one to support voting for this item to be approved for annexation and, and everything else here as soon as the code violations are resolved. Yeah, I, I, I see Mr. Kuskudis's point of view and I, I, I see the, the long-term vision, um, but at the same time, 
I believe the applicant said she's had the property since 2011. Um, I'd be interested to see prior code violations up until even though this one is recent. Um, and as much as I sympathize with property owners, I do believe that, um, you know, just saying I didn't know what was going on, not my bad, that's, that's just not an excuse is being a landowner and a property owner, you were responsible and you know that for, you know, years and years of owning property and, and being a landlord. Um, so I do see a pat, I, I believe that there might be a pattern um, and there might be, it might be sold and it might, somebody else might come along, but I, I don't foresee that. I'll see it when it, when it happens. Um, and then just, I, I agree with um, cleaning up the violations first and then um, coming back. Um, otherwise, we're just gonna, we're almost just saying, you know, yeah, just, I've never seen the staff say no to anything, <laughs> ever. <laughs> so I kind of, I feel like we should support them on this. Um, even if there's some long-term advantages of the annexation, um, I don't want to invite a, um, a problem into our city and then have our code enforcement having to deal with it, you know, continuously, which, because I believe that this is a bigger problem than it's being let on just from this short meeting. Do we have the permission to ask the applicant a question or, or is this not the mm -hmm. appropriate Can I do time? that by motion of the board to reopen the testimony and evidence? I would make that motion to reopen for the applicant to allow to answer. I'll second it. Um, second. My question to you, since you've been the owner since 2011. Yeah, we got to vote. We got to vote first. Yeah, I'm you sorry. can just do voice vote. Sorry. You don't have to can, do roll can, call yeah, vote. Can we oh. just say all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. okay. So my question to you, since you've owned it since 2011, how many other code violations have you had from the county? Okay, so there's just one on record, that, which is the current one. And, and for the record, since you're not by the microphone, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, if you could just go ahead and say that on the record so we have it, thank you. I, I don't like to summarize witnesses' testimony. So. <laughs> no violations except from May 4th is the first one. And when you acquired it in 2011, were there pre-existing code violations that you... No. Okay, that you know of. Mm -hmm. okay. Is there currently a uh, open or running lien or code enforcement order that's recorded in the public record? No. So it hasn't gone through the formal hearing. No, yet. we're still like, I'm still trying to get all the, the requirements for the county in order. Okay. And an additional question: I heard you earlier say that you intend on putting it up for sale. Is that something that you plan on doing in the immediate near future, or well, I'm, I want to resolve everything because I wouldn't be able to sell it if I have all these issues going on. So I want to make sure that everything, is, all my ducks are in a row so. before I do that. But um, I'm thinking, yeah, because I'm, I'm tired of dealing with my tenants and you know and all this. I'd just rather sell it if I, you know. But I want to get my price too, so I don't know. Um, Okay, any other questions for the applicant? All Last right. question. Okay, I, um, I was gonna say one thing too. The property right next to me sold and um, he was applying for senior housing over there. And I didn't, um, I kind of opposed that too because it is a commercial area and then he was gonna put the, you know, the, then he's saying that, you know, Anyway, I, I, I don't know what they what they finally decided on that because I, I wasn't invited to any other meeting, but um, but I did see a sign saying that it was sold, that property right next to me. It was 1600, I think it is, um, South Pinellas Avenue. Is that county? So I don't know what yes. the proposed building that they're gonna do over there. So my last question, so <laughs> this current violation, when do you think you will have it resolved? Well, that's the question because I'm trying to, they, you know, they, they, this, I have a copy of the violation here. Do you have a copy of that? I, I don't think it was requested. No. no. Because it's kind of ambiguous. It's hard because when I even asked them, what does it mean when I read it to them, they couldn't really even tell me. So it says, for the expansion of use on the property, development activities, and creation of land disturbances without first obtaining zoning approval slash zoning clearance. For an example, the operation of a boat trailer and commercial fishing equipment storage facility. 
So that's all that that violation. You don't have any idea how long it's going to take to resolve that? No, because first they wanted a current survey because I had an old survey and they wanted a current one. So I just but got the that. violations about boats being well, stored there. Well, that's the crab trap guy. Huh? That's the crab trap um, tenant. So if that person leaves. Then I'm not, and that's going to be vacant land then. But then she's in compliance. She's in a compliance. That so would be that, compliance. is that till December, you said? Well, he's putting his crab traps in the water on October 1st. When? And then December, he'll be off the property totally. Oh, as of December, First. he's off. So, mm -hmm. okay. There was, there was something mentioned also, though, about paving that was not properly permitted. Mm -hmm. and, and that can get complicated depending on how much it is because it, I mean, it, it can be required to meet water management district standards and put in drainage and all manner of things. I don't, I don't know what it amounts to in this case, but, mm. but uh, that could not be a small thing to resolve. Is, is it, can we see a copy of the code violation? Is that something to, that we um. should have in our packet? I guess she no. could submit, if, submit if, it. If you do submit that, we do have to keep it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't make a copy? Because this is my original. Um, <laughs> I mean, if... And the, 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 paving, the paving has only been paved what was paved before. But is it part of the code violation? No. Have you got anything on, on the paving where they've issued you a code violation? No. What have they issued? What have just, they, just yeah. that violation. But, but, what, why did you bring up the paving? Is it because they've got... You well, because th then they said that after, well, because they, you know, you need, I needed a permit for that and all this, and I, I'm like, but they, the, the footprint hasn't changed because that we... That said a written document where they no. sent you a letter? It, I just talked to them uh, over the phone about it. A notice. Can I, I... Yeah. So it wasn't permitted in the first place, as far as you know, the... Right, because when I asked the paving company and they do Bach Development, they said they do it all the time, and as long as we're not changing the footprint of the property, it's um, it's the same. Whatever was paved before, it was just cracked and, and everything. I just repaved it, so they ripped up the old stuff and put. But but it was exactly the same part of what was paved before. So we didn't pave over any grass or we didn't rip out any trees or anything like that. So that's why I thought, you know the that it would be because it's the exact same what it was before just better looking and you know an and older now it's a lot better looking and older aerials could pro aerials can can uh, d attest to what was paved prior yeah i, I agree but it, it appears that there's communication going on that the county's has basically told you you don't you didn't have a permit for that so that's an unresolved matter that may end up becoming a code violation. They just do, I guess the county's doing their due diligence to confirm if there's been one or, or not. Yeah, and if staff could be recognized. Um, I mean, we really can't, we can't, um, I guess, conduct the code case here because we, we can't adjudicate the, the county's code case. We do right? have an but email from the county that says that the, that, that the paving is an issue. Having heard her read the violation, the term disturbed ground to me as a code person says that, that they disturbed the ground. Now she had to she had to put in plumbing and connect to a meter. Maybe that's what they saw. We just don't know the details. I'm not completely sure if the only thing stored on site is boats. When I look at the aerial, there may be others. So so I don't know that yeah. that the you know, you know that we can cover the full scope of the code violation because yeah, I agree with that's not your, before us. Our attorney's comment about adjudicating the county's yeah. um, violations, but if we were to vote favorable to have them annexed, then we are basically going to take over their <laughs> their it, problem. It, it would become ours, and we would we would. Um, you know, uh, conducted in, in the context of our code, I, I which could, from could what be. I can see would not comply with our code. I, right I can tell you from dealing with county code enforcement and city code enforcement, our code enforcement here is a lot more stringent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, um, so if you really want compliance, <laughs> you would probably get more, uh, uh, 
more likelihood of compliance within the city than you would probably the county. Um, but that's just from my observations of dealing with both agencies. Uh, so, um, but I, I, I think what, it, it, it proved my case when, when the applicant indicated that the property next door sold uh, and it was a county property and, and whether they're putting a assisted living or senior housing or whatever the case may be, um, I think proves, proves my argument that our ability to control what, the, what you know, the, the use of the property, because uh, if in fact the code uh, enforcement's requirements are satisfied. There's already water and sewer on the property. There's no need to annex. Um, there's, they're, they're paying a higher price for the water and sewer, but nevertheless, if you look at the list of permitted uses, um, you know, if it's a lot more ex uh, comprehensive or extensive, then we may be in the long term shooting ourselves in the foot. So that's just my, my thought. And, and I, and I don't normally disagree with Merrill, but I disagree with you. Um, well, the, you know, no problem. a couple of questions for our attorney. So this is dated May the 4th, and I know they've got the language in here about uh, violations, 500 per violation, 1,000 per day. Um, if we were to annex this property and vote for that, what happens with these, these potential fines? These would go away. So if they already have a lien recorded on the property, then the date that the ordinance would become effective would stop the running of the lien because it, it, they can no longer be a judge as to whether or not um, it is in compliance because it's no longer under their jurisdiction, which once it changes to our jurisdiction, we would have to completely um, start the code case from square one with inspection, notification, and scheduling it for the hearing. So after it actually would come into the city, it would still be a couple months to kind of get the code case up and running. Now, if they did get to the point where they issued an order that was a lien and the lien stopped running when the annexation took effect, then that lien would stay on the property. The annexation does not extinguish the lien. It only extinguishes their jurisdiction to make a determination regarding compliance. Yeah, because, um dating of the letter plus I'm hearing that the crab people don't leave until the end of December even though they've taken them off they got a, there's a they have a lease with you and you're collecting revenue from that so this thing can go up till the end of December which is you know that's seven months and so there, December there, 1st there's, there's no compliance date on here either what do you mean? Well, technically, it asks for them to be corrected before 6-17. Usually, it's the notice of violation. You get 30, uh, usually around 30 days for that. Then after that, you get an additional 30 days but, but for no the notice of hearing. Yeah, there's no hearing set on this. Today. It doesn't look like there is. Okay, and my last question for, for you is, um, can we conditionally approve annexation with no. the condition? No. Well, of satisfying this as a condition of the approval. You can't because the um, the approval of the annexation extinguishes the county. You you would have to start from square one once they come in. It would it would essentially extinguish the county's jurisdiction over the property. So there would be no mechanism for them to comply, and there would be no county ordinance unless it's something that's applicable within municipal jurisdiction. So, which this is not. These are all very specific county building violations. So, could we not? There's also oh. a quite, there, there would be a question regarding the, um, the paving permitting, because technically it wasn't in your jurisdiction when the paving was done, so your jurisdiction wouldn't be the one that was requiring the permit. So, it would almost extinguish that violation for them to come in. And would our own code enforcement people? want to say that that's in violation? 
Well, depending on the nature of the paving and, and what was done there, um, it, the, the bigger question it, that you want to resolve is whether or not it's going to create drainage issues for the road. Yep. How impervious is the material that was put down? I don't know what the water patterns are, you know, if there's there's issues with flooding up and down that road or not. You know, so that those are those are all things that like I really can't answer, but you would almost be extinguishing the um, unpermitted work for the paving by annexing it in. Could we not approve a future annexation contingent upon a resolution of, of all Pinellas County uh, uh, violations? <sighs> Biggest issue that I see with that is is um, it's almost speculative in nature. Um, by doing that, you're you're putting a condition there and setting all these things in place that may or may not happen, and that could be particularly troublesome when you're talking about a taxing district because you know what you're doing is you're establishing this as part of your taxing district, and if you have something like if if for whatever reason um it doesn't come into compliance and you have these ordinances out there that it never becomes a part of your city um it's kind of out there in limbo i think that as a matter of public policy i would not have an annexation contingent on anything okay. not, i don't even know for certain if that would be allowable under the statute uh, a, a further question in that vein uh if if we did what i was suggesting and had a statement that it doesn't go for BOC approval until these are resolved, could we do that? Uh, I don't think you have a mechanism to do that under the powers that you've been granted in the code. You can't, you, you really, your two options with respect to what you're sending there is to approve or deny, and in certain cases, approve with conditions. Um, but you know, when you're talking about an ordinance, um, if you're going to have conditions like that, you would actually have to re-advertise the ordinance anyway um, because those would be material to what you're doing and they're not part of the titles as they're currently advertised. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. If, you, if, we were, if we were to follow the recommendations of, of the planning and zoning, what is the applicant's next step? Um, it can always come back. That's the nice thing about this. A, a denial of an annexation request is not permanent. It's never permanent, right? Um, so they always would have that ability to clean the property up and then come back. Um, you know, the from my perspective of, of what I see, the biggest issue is the, the potential paving issue um, because of how that would be extinguished by the annexation. It kind of begs the question of, is there a bigger issue underlying that paving, what's under there? You know, so there could be other things but, that are problematic with it. I mean, as a matter of practicality, if it were annexed in, knowing that with there, there is an issue with some unpermitted paving and lack of stormwater facilities, we would be, we would go back to Pinellas County probably and be looking for what's the last approved site plan that there is and then, and excuse me, yeah, we we did that. Which we yeah we yeah. we asked there and there, there isn't one. It's too old. So basically, you know, they'd have to go through probably have to go through a site plan approval process to and and somehow I mean even through aerial photographs we can document certain things, but the stormwater is going to have to come into compliance. So hypothetically, if we were to the annexation would the applicant have to go th now through our process to making sure I, that or yeah. are we just accepting what I, I don't think I don't think we can I mean that I, you know that there's there's not an operating swift mud permit you know for anything you know there's you know Grindable. there's potential I mean there, there's we know there's a problem, so we cannot turn a blind eye to it at this point and just say, oh, well, because it happened in the county, it doesn't exist. So, you know, we're going to have to, it, at a minimum, get them into compliance with our stormwater code in a realistic manner, you know, looking at what was existing and what's been provided, what's been changed. So how would you do that? 
if we annex them, how would you say we know we've got a problem? I now would we've report got to address them. it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I yeah. would actively. If I knew someone, we invited someone into our city with a code violation, I would report them immediately. I mean, I just think that is it's such a ridiculous hypothetical that we're even pondering right now. Well, the, I think the issue is that there would actually be additional code violations from what I'm hearing with respect to the stormwater management that aren't even addressed in the county code. So not only are you having things come in that you already know are an issue, oh, the, there's additional potential code violations under your code that would be in addition to these particular. The Pinellas County stormwater code is extremely stringent there's okay. they're more okay. stringent than us frankly um at this point although we're moving pretty quickly in that direction we just don't have the ordinance the stormwater technical manual adopted but this doesn't talk about that at all though well it, it says expanded development okay. activities okay. so i think they were kind of being they were painting Generous, a broad, broad brush to get them in the door find out what's been done gene crossing is the development review services manager this is what they do on day in and day out, and you know. So if if they're if Gene's telling us that there's unpermitted paving and increasing you know paving on the site, then they have a problem. So, you no, know, we've got some two options. How do how do we approve such a annexation and address the concerns that we have about? The violations or i don't know that we you can. can't you can't that's <laughs> the, the thing current violations would the city it would have to go through code enforcement it would be like starting a brand new case from square one and and bringing the the, the, the ultimate cure code. would be getting a site plan approved and yeah. putting whatever stormwater you know controls on the property that need to take place removing paving if necessary but it would be a site plan review process in that would in that site we're on to something now so i like the direction so that would mean that you as an applicant would either do it or whoever buys that property would end up having to do that is Cor that a correct accurate statement uh, yes somebody's going to have to do it at some point you know whether it's in the county or in the city we all know about it now yeah, I've, I've run into this before, and the problem has been, and, and this is not obviously have no bearing on this case, but maybe it does, is, you know, I've, I have a client, sim, same situation in, in Pinellas County. They had, and, and for paving that they, stuff that, that finally the county came down, that had been that way for 40 years, okay? There's no site plan 40 years ago. They don't have one, but it was done about 40 years ago. Okay, now the onus falls on the property owner. Say, hey, you're not in compliance because this paving is not supposed to be there or whatever the case may be, or you didn't get a permit. What was it 40 years ago? What was your site plan? I don't know. Maybe one doesn't even exist. But, the, but they put the onus on the property owner on something that may or may never have, have been necessary or required or, or needed to be submitted. And, and because the, the records aren't there. And, and that's that's been problematic and and so you know yeah you're opening up a can of worms this again this is a, this is obviously not for today's uh, discussion but that's important when you're when you're 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 looking at the applicant who they, this county says you're in violation but you don't have a site plan well they can't find one well who's on, whose problem is that is it the applicant's problem or is it the county's problem because they don't have one or is it the city's problem if we annex it, is it be, does it become the same? Well, what problem? I'm saying, Nick, is that is that that, pro, that that lot could have been paved 30 years ago, okay, or 40 years ago, could have been paved, and now now it's an issue 40 years later. Yeah, but I'm trying to I'm trying to come up with what I consider as a fair and reasonable it, 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 option it, where you can. There is no can be, but that's not office. really our job. So I no, mean, but if it can be annexed, because we well, know they told you twice it cannot. That no, we, your because we know are not possible. Whoever applies for that property to do something with it will go through that process. And that's their problem, but that's not our problem today. Yeah. That's not yeah. what we're here to address. Is hypothetical. Yeah, we're so. here to address this today, and I think we should focus on what our yeah, so. assigned and, application is. And one one question of legal. When we look at these applicants, we look at them on an individual basis. Whether we, we approve one or not approve another, uh, it's based on an indiv individual set of circumstances. Correct. So there is no precedent that's being set. 
It's just based on the individual set of circumstances for this applicant. That is correct. Um, sometimes, though, what you can see is if you consistently do something, then then you're establishing the way that you're going to okay. do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. But it's not the same thing as you would think of as legal precedent where it's going to be binding on you as a board. You still look at the property and the parcel as its own individual piece. Okay, but another you. applicant could come in here and say, you you've did done it. this before. Correct. And mm -hmm. I would like to do the same thing. Right. right. Yes. So, okay. I guess what I would say, my thoughts listening to everybody, I still come back actually to our chairman's initial, uh, excuse me, our, his initial position. And, you know, he said the word precedent, and that become, that's important to me. Right. <clears throat> and I understand it's not purely legal precedent, however, it's precedent nonetheless. And I would, I would say the violations bother me. I, I just feel that this is premature and that those violations should be taken care of, and then I don't see a problem. Yes, and I think that um, a lot of times with this board, we do get away from just the basic ask in the very beginning. And as it continues, and as you bring people back to speak again, and then new information is now given. Now we have, now we're considering her, uh, the applicant's um, rendition of some property that sold accordingly, uh, just as she uh, imagined. And now we're taking that into consideration. Those are not factors that we should be considering in this. And, and we, you know, the, the presentation was made. When I evaluate these, any type of zoning, I come from a place of no. That is where I start, because we have zoning for a reason. And I come from a, start, a place of no, and you take me to yes, and it has to be a big, there has to be multiple reasons to get there. And our staff coming out with the denial, the first one I've ever seen of an application, I think it would just be entirely disrespectful while we're trying to build trust again with our staff, and that, you know, to just be like, well, how can we work around this to, <coughs> further to create a problem for our code enforcement board just for maybe having a little bit of control over just one acre of, t of this unincorporated land. Mm -hmm. I just think the, the negative effects that this will have, the precedence it sets, whether it's legal or not, is far more um, detrimental to the city than just having a little bit of control maybe of this one acre of property. So. That's my, that's my opinion on it. And, and while I agree with some of the pros and cons that were brought up by various members, it's, it's certainly better to have control than to not. But do you want to take control with your eyes closed? It's kind of like getting up at bat and hoping you swing the right way uh, to a degree. I, I would like to see the applicant come back when the violations are resolved with the county, even if that's not up to our more restrictive standards. Uh, and I'd also like to see a site plan that's current, that shows the existing conditions, uh, pavement or not. Maybe the survey shows that, maybe not. But uh, this way we have a better grip on what we're physically adopting, what we're, what we're embracing, what we're, what we're uh, you know, including in our city. And then the use is going forward, you know, whether it's uh, the current owner or future owner. That'll come before this board and the board of commissioners also. So it, there's just too many variables right now. And, you know, whether the county has more restrictive standards than we do or not on these certain issues, uh, it's a little ambiguous and nebulous, the, the order of uh, the notice of violation here about what specific, uh, you know, uh, statutes or stipulations are in violation and what you need to do to bring them into conformance. That's a discussion you can have. It seems like they would, they would be open to that. You may or may not want a, a land use attorney involved to help you with this, or if there's uh, some other you know medium with the county that can kind of bridge bridge this for you. Uh, but I would certainly like to see it come back. I'd like to get rid of the jigsaw look of the zoning map and have a continuous city flow into our into Tarpon Springs. Uh, but at this time based on everything represented here. Uh, I think we're doing the city a disservice by adapting. Unless another board member really has something they want to say, I'd like to call the question at this point. Uh, I believe the applicant had one more thing. She, she's been is, raising her hand. Is yes. that appropriate at this point? Though? Um, you all never, you want, after you opened it for more testimony and evidence, you never closed it. So okay. yeah, you can go ahead. So my question is, um, why do I want it annexed? 
Because I didn't know, like, I thought the annex was just to get the sewer, you know, to, from the septic to sewer. So, like, what is it advantage to me to have it annexed in Tarpon Springs? Well, one motivation would be to not pay the surcharge. Right. Surcharge for, yeah. for what? For the water and sewer? You're paying a 30% surcharge for water and sewer service as you remain in Pinellas County. You're compelled to apply for annexation because you're seeking new additional services, wastewater service. So that automatically triggers a requirement to apply for annexation, which is how we because got Because I'd here. rather pay the more money on the sewer because my tenants are paying, you know, on the water bill than change the zoning because I don't want to change it to C2. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, from C2. So there you have it. Okay, uh, can we have a roll call, please? Do we have a, a motion? What's the motion? Yes. The, the motion was to approve ordinance 2023-14. Uh, Ms. Early? No. Mr. Rockline? No. Ms. Francis? No. Mr. Zimbalas? No. Mr. Kuskudis? Mr. Seaman? No. All right. That brings us to item number seven, application 2381 for property located at 1509 Rainville Road. Uh, this is ordinance 2023-17, 18, and 19 for annexation, future land use, and rezoning. It will be much the same process as uh, the the previous item where we'll talk about the three items together and okay miss um, kardash were you going to read the yeah. yes i will read um the title of ordinance 20 23-17 an ordinance of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, annexing 4.82 acres, more or less, of real property located at 1599 Rainville Road, application 23-81, providing for findings and providing an effective date. All right. Uh, do we have a staff presentation, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, this is for... Um, annexation of property located north of the river uh, up on uh, Rainville Road, 4.82 acres. And um, it's the, I'm sorry. sorry. I just, just want to get a clarification on the last application. Did you, you'd say they took no action on the land use and zoning, but I still have to carry this forward to the Board of Commissioners, so. The annexation has the recommendation of denial. Both for everything? Yes. Thank you, so I'm sorry. There's, there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, it's this triangular piece here. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, a property um, currently um, uh, has a metal salvage and recycling uh, business. The applicant is present and can expand on uh, the use of the site. Um, basically up uh, in an area of the city where we do have um, a fair amount of annexed property and then there, there are some uh, county areas. Um, it's adjacent to basically an area of industrial and employment uses. Uh, over here um, across this um, old railroad right of way and easement Duke Energy about 200 feet away is the Meadows Mobile Home Park. Then there's some more residential here uh, that's in the county. Uh, this is, yeah, on Rainville Road. So Rainville Road basically dead ends here and that's the entrance to the site. Mm. This is the triangular piece here um, showing the uh, metal recycling facility and um, materials that are stored on site. So the request is to annex um, 
the 4.82 acres, it's currently employment, future land use under the county and would go to industrial limited under the city and it's currently employment one under the county and would go to industrial restricted under the city. So again, your five criteria, um, basically this, um, this annexation is uh, adjacent to the city and it would not create an enclave. And this, this property or this area that the property is in is judged to be a type A enclave. So if, if this were annexed, it would reduce the size of that enclave, but um, it's adjacent to the city. So, so real quick, the interlocal agreement with the county basically allowed the city to annex non-contiguous properties if they could show it was in a larger enclave. And this was for to give a little bit of flexibility to make services more efficient. This one is adjacent, so it, we really don't, it didn't really didn't need to meet that criteria. Um, but it is in, in one of those areas. Uh, public facilities are available to the property with the exception of sanitary sewer infrastructure. There's no sewer line to this property. The nearest is on North Pinellas Avenue. Um, so the city has the ability to serve the property with the exception of wastewater service at this time. A future developer, redeveloper would have to extend that line if, if that were proposed. Um, or extend a line, I'm not sure what, what service is uh, nearby. Um, the property has a non-conforming use on it. So I'm um, just kind of flipping back for a second. Basically, um, all these uses um, around the property are employment in the county or industrial limited pretty much or transportation, utility, public service. This is the RO plant, for example. These are um, city facilities, warehousing, um, some, some industrial, light industrial and, and manufacturing, some storage, um, both in the city and the county. This is considered a heavy industrial use. Um, so it is not conforming in the county and it would be in the city. They do have a county letter uh, that certifies them as a, an existing legal non-conforming use. Um, so uh, this, this would be on its face without, without really, you know, going into the details of the operation as a heavy industrial use would be um, judged incompatible on its face. And, and I, will, I should have probably given you a bigger, oops, bigger map, but the city's heavy industrial pretty much limited up here to Wesley Avenue, about northeast of the Stauffer site. So that's where our heavy industrial is. Um, and then number five, uh, the non-conforming use of the property is inconsistent um, with the comprehensive plan, uh, industrial limited category that it would need to go to, uh, to be um, uh, the, kind of the matching category to the county's employment. Um, so the board should consider whether this status, this non-conforming status would be uh, an issue. That criterion number four that I read earlier, uh, one of the um, examples besides code enforcement violations of something that may place undue burden on the city was non-conforming uses and that's what this is. So in industrial limited, um, the, um, that designation is uh, uh, up, um, consistent with comprehensive plant policies and what the future uses would be in that area. Um, and it is also consistent with the countywide plan. This is a target employment area and designated employment on the countywide map. Um, but it does have that legal non-conforming use um, and it wouldn't remain 
legal non-conforming until it's terminated. Um, in the city, if it were to come into the city, if it was abandoned for six months, uh, it would be, uh, could not be reestablished. And then the rezoning, uh, so it would go to industrial restricted zoning, which would be consistent with industrial limited future land use. And the industrial restricted zoning uses would be consistent and compatible with the area. Uh, so future development would be compatible with this area. Um, and for number three, um, this would bring it into the appropriate designations. And again, this would be considered to be incompatible on its face as it exists now, would not promote orderly growth. As far as the burden on the city, I mean, you know, it would, as that area changes or redevelops, um, you know, there would be compatibility issues that would need to be addressed or could be. So there would be that to address and just um, monitoring the property um, to ensure that it does eventually redevelop or come in, um, gets business tax receipt to keep operating those types of things. So that, that would be um, some of the activities the city would have to undertake if this were annexed. Um, it will not um, unduly impact city facilities. Um, again, there is no sewer service to the property. They are not asking for sewer service, just water service. Um, so at this time, uh, the property can be served. So because mainly of your, your criteria, your annexation criteria, um, that kind of gives you the discretion to judge the burden on the city due to this legal non-conforming condition. We are recommending denial of this annexation and there was no response to public notice. Are there any questions? I, I, I do. Would you, mm -hmm. the, the chairman. So Pat, let me ask you this. If, if it's a non-conforming use and that non-conforming use is abandoned by the county I mean, by, uh, by the applicant, um, the county is, the non-conforming use goes away and it has to be conforming use even at the county level. Yes. Okay. If, if it's annexed into the city and it become, and as a non-conforming use, and then they stop, uh, I think for six months or, or, or greater, then it has to be in, uh, uh, conforming within the city. That's correct. So either way, whether it's annexed or not annexed, if, if the use is not used or for six months, then it has to, con it has to come in uh, as a conforming property. Yes, I, actually, I believe actually the county's non-use period is shorter. I believe it's 90 days. Okay. Is so, what I read. so what's, I, I'm trying to figure out, I, and I understand like the last applicant accepting it with with code enforcement issues but but what's the downside when you say having to monitor this property mm. I, I well mean, I, I'm not sure there's a huge downside um, I would say uh, you know it is heavy industrial no matter what happens around it right so anybody that comes in to redevelop to develop property around that's in the city, um, that is incompatible already. Um, so, you know, um, I would say basically with the criteria, the annexation revised criteria, um, that uh, there was a desire to include this category in, in that criteria of potential undue burden. And, and even with the last one we discussed, the extent of a code violation, you know, things like that. And I don't know the attorney would agree, but as far as establishing a pattern of whether you annex or not, this criteria to me gave staff direction, which is why we have these denials but it is pretty discretionary. It's not a hard and fast, it, it gives you, it says, you know, may cause an undue 
burden. Well, that so that's the I'm kind of the decision. And if you can distinguish from one application to the next what that is. Mm -hmm. um, and Renee has the yeah. answer. <laughs> well, I don't know if I she have the good. answer, but I have a consideration. So, so right now, I mean, you can look at the aerial photographs. You can see what's going on. It's a pretty heavy use. Um, it's in pretty close proximity to residential. Um, so when if a complaint comes in and it's in the city, now we're dealing with it. So right now, complaints pretty much are going to Pinellas County to deal with this fact that we have this longstanding, non-conforming, heavy industrial use in an area that... Fair, fair explanation. Yeah. Okay, so let me ask you this. If you did an overlay of a proposed future land use, of this property, okay? And there is an overlay of what the county's land use would be, or would they be significantly different? The the county's employment land use designation is very comparable to our industrial limited designation, which is what we were, or rest, limited or restricted, um, to what what would be, what we're proposing for the future land use. They're, they're very close. Um, in fact, um, if you recall, looking at our future land use for the comprehensive plan purposes in the update, we're recommending changing our industrial, light industrial designation to employment as well. So that, you know, so they're very much in line. It, it is, it is non-conforming in the county as well. It's a, I mean, and to be fair to that, it's a legal non-conforming use. It, you know, it is, uh, but it's a very extensive disturbed property with a lot going on is the the reason for this request in the first place just to get city water uh, that the potable water request is what triggered the, the required annexation application um, I'm gonna just say I'm guilty of not knowing whether the property I, I owner really wants to annex or not I'm sure that might be a question for them at this point as well so um, I'll leave that at, you know for real the, this letter that's in the packet from 2006 from the county saying it's non-conforming and they have 90 days to cure it. That was in 2006, so what... Is, did just nothing happen after that? <laughs> I thought that said that it was allowed as a non-conforming use unless it ceased for 90 days. Is that what that okay. says? Okay. Right. Yeah, okay. that's. Right. So to our knowledge and our correspondence with the county, they recognize it as a legal non-conforming use Since. and continue to operate as is, as long as they don't okay. increase the intensity of the activity, anything like that. You know, that's where getting the monitor, you know, the monitoring and stuff can become some somewhat Difficult. Okay, you so know, then so. you just have to keep monitoring it right. after that. Okay, gotcha. So the monitors? current applicant is the metal building Fire department business. So they're just yes. annexing because of the, the water. Yes, and the county did issue, um, there is in your back in a, a site plan approval for a truck weighing scale in 2010. So the county continues to process and approve, you know, improvements to the property. Mm -hmm. One one thing that, that I kind of wonder about, and it's, uh, this is definitely different situation than the other one since it is a legal conforming use, but I, I, I wonder about the extent of the extra load. I, I, I don't see it being that much for the, the code enforcement inspectors to inspect this. And as we have, have kind of pointed out, the, the city tends to be a little tougher. And since it's right here in the immediate area also, I think <coughs> perhaps it's, it would be better monitored by the city personnel than the county personnel who don't really care to come up here. Yeah. And, and I'm just, I'm just going to just reiterate, we have one code enforcement officer and it's complaint driven. So that needs to be, I mean, I, it's just the way that we operate at the moment. So I mean, how, 
how would we monitor like an increase in business or an increase in activity? <coughs> that um, one officer? Just that one officer? Right. Yeah, so uh, um, it, yeah, we, we would, uh, I mean, if, if there were something uh, somebody complained about, um, and, and you can ask the applicant if there's any history of complaints at the county. Um, I'm assuming they, you know, aren't uh, operating real early in the morning or some, something's going to be, you know, people are going to complain about noise or something. I don't know what those, you know, complaints might, might be if there were any. You could ask them about that. But, um, yeah, if there was some major expansion of the area, they start building something without a permit. Sure, we, we do have. Just yeah. honestly, the other concern, you know, and all you have to do is look at the aerial photograph and look at what's, what is on the property. And yes, it's a legally non-conforming use. It is property line to property line. Um, I don't see any stormwater controls. I don't, I mean, there could be environmental impacts on this property um, that we just don't know, frankly. And so there's an element of unknown to this um, because it has been in operation for so long um, that is a little concerning uh, from my perspective. Mm -hmm. Quick question, Pat. Uh, if we were to annex this property, is there a, an avenue for the owner to come into compliance with the activities there? Uh, you know, such as the, uh, you know, a, a separate board to assess that type of use and, and whether or not it can be granted? Uh, that use could not be granted in the industrial limited. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Category. Does anybody know, does anybody know me, Vinny, to ask applicant? Are there DEP inspections that are done consistently or required? I don't know what the uh, state rules are regarding this I'll industry. I'll probably just ask the applicant that one. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for staff? I had a quick question. Is there, when, um, when there's applications for annexations, do they fill out a form that like asks them why they want to annex? Uh, yes, we, we ask them why. They either email it to us or put it on the form. Okay. Yeah. Is, is that something that we can include in the packet? That way we can, because okay. I, I feel like the last applicant wasn't quite <laughs> Yeah, positive. it was on the form annex to, um, to, so I just put it in the staff report, but we can certainly include the application where okay. they wrote it on there so you can actually see it. All right, thanks. Any further questions for staff? Seeing none, would the applicant like to make a presentation? Good evening. Ricky Huff, 1602 Ridgewood Street, Clearwater, Florida, uh, and I have been sworn in. And may I ask a question? So the applicant uh, is, it, yeah, she, um, she is the one representing um, so she needs to authorize you to speak because I don't have an affidavit. Sure. She needs to come up and... On the is record, that okay? Please. Yes, I don't have record. an affidavit for him yes. to represent. Okay. I'm Jennifer Nishijima, 405 Orangewood Avenue, Clearwater, Florida, 33755. I authorize Ricky Huff to speak on my behalf. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we don't have a big presentation. This will be short. The applicant does not object to the staff's recommendation of denial. <laughs> That's a first, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Okay, any, uh, <coughs> any, any board questions for the applicant? No. No? All right. Uh, at this point, we'll open the floor for public comments. Any members of the public here wishing to speak on this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public comment portion of our meeting. Uh, I don't think there's anybody that <coughs> needs rebuttals or anything, so we'll bring this item back to the board for consideration. I need a motion and a second. I'll make a motion. 
I'll, I'll make a motion to deny application 23-81. Um, Any board discussion? No. Seeing none, let's have a roll call. Ms. Early? No. Mr. Rockline? Uh, I just asked for clarification from council. Uh, is the motion to deny it or the motion to approve? The motion was made to deny. That's what I thought. Okay, so I'm, I'm voting yes, denial. If I could back up, me as well. Yes for the denial. Yes is no. Yeah, yes is no. Um, Ms. Francis? Yes. Mr. Zambellis? Yes. Mr. Cruz Curtis? Yes. Mr. Seaman? Yes. All right. Yes. Thank you all. You made it easy for us. Uh, all right. Do we have staff comments? Let's. Um. We have, um, we asked you all about uh, comprehensive plan workshop dates, future dates. Um, we heard from most of you, it looks like on September 25th, we only heard from four of you that could attend. Uh, that one I think is the one we'd, we'd probably like to know um, how, how many can attend on the 20th, that'd be next Monday. Oh. Okay. Okay. So we have two members, I believe, with a conflict. Um, so it's up to you um, whether you think that should go forward or not. And I think everybody was available on October 23rd and October 30th. So we can look at those dates, but um, probably want to get your direction on the 25th if, if you want the full board. Or, This would be our third workshop. Uh, that being said, do you anticipate the, the necessity for a fourth workshop, or you think we'd be able with what we've gotten accomplished to wrap it all up at the next? Uh, we workshop? anticipate a fourth workshop. Okay, thank you. And we have two that cannot make the September 25th. Does that mean that you got responses from the others that? Yes. So we would. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I would like to go for the 25th and get as much done as we can, um, knowing we're going to have it, you know, we'll have at least one more after that where we can recap with the folks that couldn't attend on. But I'd like to try to keep this moving. So mm. if, if, the board, if the board's willing to meet on the 25th. So to the rest of y'all. Yeah, we said yeah. Um, How about? Other just who's our uh, what? What's uh, the other? Mr. Vesey said he could attend all three dates. Okay, mm -hmm. so we do have five then. Mm -hmm. okay. That's it for staff comments. Okay. Um, we did have uh, the workshop set for tonight. I don't know if you still want to do that. Adjourn a regular session and start the workshop session or do you, whether you want to no, go Monday. ahead and do the What do you guys think? Oh. I mean, we've usually tried to shut it down by nine, so we can work, mm -hmm. till, nine. We can work till nine if you want. Take a break at least. For, take a quick break, yeah. 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 We have housing in coastal, maybe you could hit, hit housing. It could be, mm -hmm. you know, might be something <laughs> you could do. Pick the one that gets us it done by nine. <laughs> I'm sure I can get you a bottle for No, I for some reason I thought because I've been feeding for the last hour long. I know. <laughs> Actually, I got cleared Friday, so oh, um, I, I'm jogging about a half a mile. Oh, that's good. Um, it's a little pace, but I'm jogging.
try to give strength because we got a car. We're going to drive all the way down. Um, we have Paul for the manic road, which is just a small little uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. villages all the way down to Burks, yeah. Burks synagogue. And we're going to stay there for about five days. And that's where Hitler had the Google camps for the Alps. And then we're going to go to Salzburg to Vienna mm. and spend time in there village at home. This is October first. I'll be here for October. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, no, it goes on for about two weeks. Good. So how is it that way? Not all bratwurst or whatever. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> they said that, you know, and I can tell you exactly what happened. In, in Siena, they have the, the city center. Okay. And you're not supposed to drive into the city center. Well, I can't read the fact that it's fine. So I was driving, I was right in the city center, and there was a police officer. He goes, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Sometimes when it's she's not work. No, no, she's at work. Oh, till 10. Till 10? Yeah. yeah. Good. She works in Publix in, in Palm Harbor. You don't care, yeah, I forgot. Customer service yeah. Self uh, checkout and all those little things that you can do because she's got nerve damage in her hands. So she's kind of. She compensates pretty well, but because she's yeah. had it for so long. How did she get the nerve damage from? It, it was probably from gallbladder surgery where it hurt the brachial nerve. Or something really? the way she was laying, or something. I don't know. She's explained oh. it so many different ways oh, okay. over the years. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But then she, her mother also. So there's probably a hereditary element to it also. So my husband's looking at um, a cervical. I forgot what it's called. Cervical mm -hmm. surgery because um, his hands go numb and they hurt mm. and all that good stuff. Yeah, I just had a little, little arthritis that my knee and my hip was bad, but <laughs> I'll, I'll get to the point if I need to do something, I will. Yeah, I've got but, it in my hands. Mm -hmm. I've got it in my hands. Yeah, I have a little. Yeah, and oh, I have the little. Mm. And, um, so one just cramps. Sometimes if it's from yard work, uh -huh. and, and I, I can go to the gym and pull and push, doesn't make a difference, but just certain things. doing something, yeah, yeah, holding something the wrong way. Today I was power washing with the disc on the sidewalk. Uh -huh. No, no problem mm. whatsoever. Did you have that, or do you have one? No, uh, I have, I have yeah. one. It, do they work good? Yeah, no, I had an older one. Mm -hmm. It's like 15 inch, okay, uh, and it's just got the two jets that go around. Right. And then I bought a new oh, one down yeah. yeah. here because I still use the other one up north when I was going back and forth. And the new one is nowhere near as good as the older one. You know, it's everything, isn't yeah. it? Well, for whatever reason, 
and they have, they're more and more prevalent now. They actually have the big. So that, uh, yeah. so that we can wrap this up That's funny. in about 30 minutes. There you go. Uh -huh. I like the okay. Speed housing. We're going to do the housing. Yeah, what What do y'all want to start with? Sounds like she's got the housing element. Yeah. yeah. We gave her a guideline of pick the one that's... We'll just have the 25th one. Chairman, we can defer to you as to how it, or how you want to go about this. Um, do you want to start with the housing element? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we always recommend starting with the clean version, but if you guys want to start with the strike through underline, I certainly understand. Um, and I guess we can just start at the top and walk through it. Yeah, I tend to think the strike through is a little easier for us okay. to see what changed. Very good. Do we have both versions? Yes, the house right after. <laughs> the one that's got a spreadsheet or a table on it has the <coughs> current version on one side, the proposed in the middle. Might be in between. We've attempted in the notes section to hit everything, but explaining why the certain things were changed, but obviously if we miss the mark, we'll take a step back. I apologize. I still have a cough drop I'm trying to get rid of here, so. <laughs> Which one are we doing? Housing. Um, I 
I'd say we, we seem to have most success if you just walk us through them one, one by one, kind of. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll start cool. with goal one. Um, it's pretty broad. Um, we, again, we just simplified a little bit, provide a mix of housing to meet the needs of existing and future population. So that's a broad, that's all housing, not just affordable. Um, under objective uh, 1.1, 1 .1. Uh, let's see, we combined 1.1 and 1.2. So the, assist the housing authority, nonprofit organizations, and private sector to preserve and increase the supply of attainable housing for all current and future residents. Uh, what, which one are we on? It's, a, it's objective. One, one, one. Well, it says 1.2 on here. I guess it should be. So it really ought to be still 1.1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. Yeah. Okay, 1.1. 1. 1, yeah. So on this one, the original is to assist. I don't mind, like, you know, adding housing authority, nonprofit to that, but then to then increase the supply of attainable housing. Um, that's not really clarified in the notes, and I don't even know how that's necessarily even possible, but. So attainable housing is really more of the, on the low moderate income range. So we do have a goal to increase the affordable housing supply. If you, you know, if that's a more direct way to say it that you would prefer to see, um, we do have unmet affordable housing needs in the city. Attainable housing is a little more gentle way to say that. I mean, I feel like with the Live Local Act, it, I mean, it doesn't even really matter what our objective is, it's gonna happen. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, that, you know, that, that certainly is a consideration now. Yeah. You know, it, it is. Um, what triggered the, in, the word increase? Just the, the, the countywide issue of affordable housing, you know, the countywide compact, you know, there, there's a, there's a push countywide to increase affordable housing. Um, you know, certainly the city of Tarpon Springs doesn't need to bear the burden of all of that, but we need to make sure that we're meeting the needs of, you know, for us locally. Um, and so, you know, we do have an unmet need. Um, there's always going to be an unmet need. Um, you know, maybe it's just say instead of in, maybe instead of a seed. I mean, I don't know how it's even maintain possible for us a, to... Maintain an adequate supply? Yeah. Yeah, okay. what is that? Yeah. I don't understand that. Let's say it again. Hmm? Say, say that again, I didn't hear you. I don't understand maintain an adequate supply. Yeah, I mean, if we're assisting, and I, I, I just don't see why we need to increase the supply. That's, how do we even do that? Is it an objective? We are going to increase supply. I'm well, not sure. I that's tell you it. how you increase density, and that's yeah. not, I think that's, yeah. that's kind of contrary to what I think. Right. This is really, wor it's, it's working with the affordable housing providers to, under our existing, like, you know, so right now we provide for an affordable housing bonus density. So that's working with, you know, so, you know, but it's a conditional use process. It's something that we have to facilitate to, you know, in order for, for people to get, you know, the, the developers to get through those processes. So it's not meant to. We're already assisting them in we, that we, we are. I don't think so, we you know, do So why don't we just, more. we'll let us wordsmith on something other than increase. Well, you I know, know that, yeah. you know, even though she's not here, the lady from Banesh, mm -hmm. she, her entire background was all affordable housing. I mean, sure. that was her job as code hacking and doing all this stuff to, you know, to find the loopholes in codes. That's, I mean, that was, that's her expertise to do just this. Um, and I just don't think that we should be putting so, this burden on, our, on ourselves when we're already assisting everything and then they're gonna give it to us anyways, whether we want it or not, so. Is the word meet? Yeah. Can that be placing increase to preserve and meet the supply of attainable that, housing? Sure. For all. Mm -hmm. Well, and does, I mean, we're talking about affordable housing here for the most part. 
and it says attainable here, is there a difference in definition and are, are those terms, I think affordable is defined, but is attainable housing? So it, it, there, you know, attainable is probably is looking at a broader range by far. Um, but there are a lot of people that are making decent incomes right now that can't find a, a house to buy in an afford. So it's not attainable. So we are looking at a little bit broader picture of supply and demand issues. Yep. So it's not just on affordable housing. Um, I would say it's broader than, than affordable housing. Okay, and then so it, attainable just means attainable. It doesn't right. mean specific criteria and, and governmental things then. Okay. It seems like I'll get involved in interest rates. Yeah, right. I, mean, I don't know if you, yeah. you know, watched right. the last BOC meeting, but our uh, BOC board members uh, don't really, board you know, board. have don't, these words, these adjectives that you're using, like attainable. <laughs> I mean, they, they they were having pro problems with, you know, malicious and words like that. So I don't know if we want to just throw words out there that we can't define. I don't, I, I don't see like some of these why they need to change. This is just adding, you know, words that don't mean anything to just but just to just to change our objective to that we are going to help this housing authority the affordable i mean that's really what we're doing and knowing it was written by somebody who works for affordable housing um i just i feel like the way adding just that we're going to also assist the housing authority nonprofit and then keeping the rest the same is, is okay. just fine I, if that's the wish of the board we'll keep it that we'll rework it back and add in the uh I mean, I think we all understand that affordable yeah. housing is just another word for development. Right. And I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. that we all understand that, you know, we can't stop it already. So why are we bending over backwards to right. now also say it's our mission to help you do what you're going to do to us, whether we want it or not, or whether we can stop it. Does the word, which, what's, which one's bothering you with your site? So I understand. What well, all of it, really. All of it, <laughs> what, what would you propose? Going I don't back like to just, the just adding that we're also going to assist not just the private sector, but also the housing authority, a nonprofit, and keeping the rest just the same. I'm, I'm stuck on the word increase. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Getting all that out. That I'm gonna saying gonna only add, we'll, we'll, we'll only rework it to take increase to, out. And I just, don't, I just don't want the implication that, that we would be saved by admission. Okay. All of these words were put in there. They're not, they mean something to, to the lady that put them in here. Just because, and then, they're, and then on our end, we're just like, oh, that sounds really fine and dandy. Check mark. Well, let's be, you know, <laughs> the, the consultant worked on this, but we've gone through this pretty extensively on the staff side since, we, since it was received. So who wrote what i'm not exactly sure right now because it's been through two or three hands <laughs> so, to go back. but we'll yeah we'll 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 revert that back we'll add in the you know i understand about you know setting kind of a policy of increasing you know because it sounds like you know the the logical way to do that is the increased density and that's not so, okay I understand where you're going okay all right um so the next one pursue and point two point one provide information and technical assistance to private sector to maintain a housing production and capacity sufficient to meet the need for housing choice and affordability. I know this this may be getting picky, but I think you could take the A out of there and it yeah. would sound better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think so. So again, I think that's just making information available. I do like taking the shall out of these though. I mean. Technical assistance in the private sector to maintain a housing spoken for truth. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> back to capacity sufficient to me that calls for an increase mm -hmm. yep. so straight capacity and capacity yeah and capacity sufficient right. i was going to flip the two words put sufficient before capacity yeah. and sufficient capacity to meet the need well, of, i don't sufficient capacity to me you're, you're 
It's subjective. It's well, but still, you know, we're looking at it one way. You look at it in the future. I don't want the implication that that, that may refer to. Well, let's we need more density then if we if we're going to uh, uh, need capacity sufficient or sufficient capacity. That that implies there could be an increase in in density. Yeah, or, or one way as you look at it, that, well, that I, word I sufficient. Wanna, I don't want to. I don't want to. Can be defined in a very yeah, broad it, sense. Yeah, it depends on who's reading it, and so without that in there, right. you, there's there's no there's no question. So what are you what, what are you mean. saying? Uh, take just remove sufficient say capacity to meet. No yeah. capacity. Just, just uh, take uh, out housing production capacity. to meet the need for choice. Yeah. Housing choice and affordability. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Say that one more time. Where it, where it says to the private sector to maintain a housing production or maintain housing production sufficient to meet the need, need for, for housing choice okay. and affordability. Yep. Oh, keep Got it. insufficient. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought we wanted that you wanted that out. I, I did. You want capacity out. Want you want to, you're basically want to make sure that we're not slowing down housing production. <laughs> Or you could get rid of sufficient or, or a housing production to meet the need right. for yeah, housing that's affordability. Yeah, okay. that's what I would be more favorable to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Take out yeah. capacity and sufficient. Yeah. Okay. Y'all moved on to 1.5.3, yeah. yeah. or yeah. whatever yeah. the next one is, the original one, yeah. I think last time we started going through there, it just stopped at the ones we had questions on. Right. Sure. So, okay, one point. 2.2 I'm using the numbering that's in the middle column so yeah. Yeah. With it. I'm already on the next page. All right so then we struck out <coughs> objective 1.2 that was combined with I think that was with combined 1.1 1.2. All right, so policy 1.1.6. 1. 1. 1. Wow. 1.2. Any issues with the addition of context sensitive infill housing? Which one? So 1. this would 1. be 6. It's 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 6. 1.1.6. Utilize and amend as necessary the land development code to provide for a variety of housing types, particularly context sensitive infill housing. It doesn't seem to be That's reading right for me, at least. Provide, a, provide for a variety of housing types, comma, particularly context sensitive infill housing, oh. and then it ends. This that there's a two before they're provided. Kind of, kind of yeah. hard to see it. it it's hard to read on there. Oh, it oh, kind of okay. runs together. Oh, yeah. I see. I see. Thank you. Got good eyes. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. The policy so, one point two. Yeah. This, yeah, particularly context sensitive infill housing. Infill housing is another one of those. Code hacks, words that you got to put in there for density purposes. It's another one. And, uh, consistent with feedback, because I'm sure someone from the public said we need really to particularize the context and in sensitive infill housing. That's usually what the public says in community workshops. Mm -hmm. 
Well, so you know, the policy 1.2.1, the original cited compatible with surrounding area. We're saying context sensitive infill. We can, if you want to specific, you know, that's meant to address compatibility. Yep. I understand. Okay. But it says with the surrounding area, but here it doesn't say that. It says particularly context sensitive infill housing. Mm -hmm. Where did that, that came from a public workshop and survey? Where is it, where, can you show us where that came from? Yeah, actually, yeah, when we, okay. I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I can't point it to you. When we had the, um, the various, both online and the, the public, specifically the public workshops, we had boards that showed different housing types and we asked people to, to you know, put stickers on the ones that they right. are, would be okay with in their, their areas. So, yeah, but those, those, those workshops were not checked for either citizens, residents, or anybody. In fact, anybody could come and from a non-resident and grab 15 stickers and put them in one spot. I witnessed it myself, so I'm not really too comfortable with just creating, you know, the words of our uh, land development code based on a non-monitored, you know, public workshop that I witnessed non-residents attend and throw stickers on whatever they wanted. Because you knew they weren't residents. Because I knew they weren't residents, right. Because there's no, ch and I went to these workshops where there was no check-in, there was no uh, verification to know that these people were residents participating in this. Put on by Banesh. Whatever. That's so. Uh, the city, the city, we advertised those. We attended those workshops. The well, consultant just, just did the mean, the boards and set up the exercises and everything. I we can't control who attends. There certainly were plenty of residents no, there. No, you can just you can control as, the output. Right. You know. I mean, you, we, you you do have some type right of sign in, right? They do no, sign. Oh, no. So it's just they walk in. Yes, we in. do. Yeah. Oh, it's it's like any other have, public yeah. meeting. I don't yeah. have sign in and of putting people your address in there. Okay. So, uh, is there a consensus of wanting to change this? Okay. So then the next one. Let's see. We struck that through because it was. Referencing Pinellas by design, which does not exist anymore. Again, so the next one was also removed because it was Pinellas by design reference. I apologize. Can we back up just for a second at 1.2? Sure. I'm just getting confused because it's. It's stricken to the right in blue. Yeah, and it says com it doesn't make any sense. It says it's combined with the same objective that it. 1.2. It should have been 1.1. 1.1. Yeah. Oh, 1. 1. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so we're not creating housing, right? That that objective it was wrapped up in. So the overall one up above that. Okay. It's just that. Um, the system housing authority that that one the nonprofit and private sector to preserve we struck out increase supply of attainable housing for current so it was all kind of wrapped together okay thank you uh, next page <laughs> one point no, one to one point five point one because I've gone through a, a, a right yeah. one point one point four this was amended and updated to include uh, current efforts for the Union Academy in the Greek town area. Yes. 1.1.4? 1. 1. Yep. The next page, right top of the page, 1.1.4 oh. 1. 1. under proposed language. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> Is that as a result of the workshop that we had people wanting Greek town included? Sense. We're recognizing things that are going on. We're, we're working with Union Academy. We're working with Greek Town. So those are things that are already going on. Cool. The and other vulnerable areas of the city subject to gentrification, that's just to cover just if anything else comes in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Makes sense. <laughs> Leaving that door open. One point 
two, three. This we amended to sh show current CRA as well as yeah. any future CRAs. Again, we're anticipating one for the Union Academy area. <coughs> I'm okay with 1.4.1. 1. I got to go back to 1.4.2. Okay. Do we really need to say um, ensure housing development meet and or exceed and or exceed kind of puts a high bar? Yeah, I'm not sure there's any real need for no. that other than to just have it meet accessibility requirements. Four two. It's an and or, so it's pretty. That's a high bar. Well, it says and or, so it's not and or exceed. So, I mean, I have no problem striking that. If Don't you have to comply? I mean, it's we do. Yeah, so yeah we do. Can, like, we do. Why even add extra language to these things? Yeah, I mean, it just seems completely yeah. wasteful. To adding all these extra words. So if I can relay into the microphone what Caroline was saying is um, having that as a goal to exceed, um, when you make something more accessible for ADA, you make it more accessible for everyone. And that can be small children. It can be. So it's something to, you know, it's not a mandatory. It's just a. So it, OK. So there's no real objection to it. Are we currently meeting? We have to. Yes, yeah, we, we have to. Okay. So. It's like it says follow the rules, it's basically. <laughs> Fail 1.4.3. When when we talk about um, in the 1.4.3, mm -hmm. we require the developer to provide new public facilities. What's the definition of public facilities? Water, sewer. Okay. Recreational. Recreational sidewalks, yeah. especially affordable housing okay where it says the city shall continue to utilize streamline and review for efficiency of the building permit approval process to minimize costs and delays for housing i think that in and of itself would be a sufficient um because to develop an expedited review process for affordable housing what what about if i wanted to build a house that was you know i don't get the expedited process so no, you don't. <laughs> but but it, this is a common this is a common practice. You know we don't have one here in the city, but other jurisdictions in Pinellas County they very much have expedited review processes. Now that might simply mean your building permit review goes to the top of the list. Um, it's not 
you know, we just don't have any incentives from a review process for affordable housing right now. So we think that's a deficiency. So the current policy, way Mike saying to strike out especially affordable housing, what drove us to go to the proposed language? This this is this is tasking us to do it. I think this is I think it's stronger language. language the way it's written now than it is the way it was originally written. Okay. Develop an expedited re review process for all affordable housing applications. That that is a strong statement, it, it, no doubt. So, the, the, I'm sorry. I was just going to say the state has kind of done that for you. They have without your consent. <laughs> They have. Yeah, so, being so, fundamentally unfair, if I was building a, a regular house that I put on the, on the shelf, so, so affordable housing can, can you know. So, in, in your, you, you would like to see the original language and then strike out especially affordable housing at the end. Correct. Because I think that should be the, the, the build, that should be the, the task in any event to be, to, be uh, to utilize streamline and review for efficiency building permit process. Should it not be for all uh, building permits, or should it just? We certainly want to be as efficient as possible. But why not just use that? But it, it, well, to go back to the question is why are we doing this? It's all it's it, well, it's and all it, about affordable housing. You know, we're all fooling ourselves. The process should be equal across the board. Yeah. Now you got a good point. Agreed. Yeah. I, it, it, uh, if there's a consensus of the board of what you want to recommend, I'll, we'll we'll put it in and carry it forward. I just like what's there, except for the, the last comma, especially affordable housing. I think that should be a, a goal of any uh, review process. Yeah. We do not. That's that's true. So uh, yeah, yeah, Allie brought up a good point. We don't have a process now, so you know. Well, we have one under the current language, right? Well, it says, yeah, the city shall continue to utilize, streamline, and review for efficiency the building permit approval process. And minimize and costs and, cost and delays for housing, especially affordable housing. Yeah, so to get rid of the comma, especially affordable housing, and I think that would be a good statement in general. It would, Mike, but it's but we're not making, if we strike out affordable housing, then we're not even addressing that. We're just saying normal but, business. But that's, it's, it's all housing, not just affordable. It's just, yeah. it's all, you know, this, that's the point is this is the housing element. It's not, but what it, it's not the affordable housing element, but that's what it's essentially turned into. That's. Well, and, and that's to, I mean, to be fair, that's what most housing elements are to address affordable housing. That, that is the main tenet of a, of a housing element. That's when you look at state statutes, the housing element really is driven towards that. Affordable housing. So then why is it necessary to write it then? As especially. It be in there. State I happy. think it needs to be in there too, but okay. maybe not to say, just don't emphasize I mean, if that's especially. the whole point, then why are we saying especially what we're here to talk about? If this is all this, then, you know, I don't know. I can't defend the way it's written right now. I'm looking at what, you know, what's being recommended and that's my recommendation. Yeah, but you and just removed affordable housing. Another, another, affordable. another way to address it would be to change, especially to including. Including. What if, what if we called it mm -hmm. attainable? I mean, yeah. then we'd really, you know, be changing all the landscape entirely. True. <laughs> I would agree with that, including. Mm -hmm. yeah. Including. Including. Mm -hmm. yes, instead of especially. Including is good. And Renee, what would be the intent to, to step up the process for, for hearings and such or step up the no, plan the, review or both? I think this is more about the plan review side of, of things. Um, mm. I mean, I, I say that, it, you know, I say that. Um, it, this is referring, the way it's written today, the existing policy is referring to the building permit approval process. Now, I guess you could step that back and say, Inherently, that includes 
your site plan review process and everything. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, again, so something when I was at Pinellas County, they very consciously, when they updated their land development code, they changed their land development code to make affordable housing projects, which come with a bonus density as permitted by right, no public hearings required. Um, and they, I mean, they purposely did that because they are, they are supporting, and it's a policy decision, they are supporting, you know, maximum affordable housing and removing those barriers um, that come from, you know, the public hearing process. So, you know, again, those are policy decisions to be made. Um, you know, we currently don't really have anything that incentivizes or not incentivizes, but eases the, you know, the process or, or gives a priority to affordable housing, even at the building permit level. So it, it follows everything else. So that, I think the bigger policy decision that we're wrestling with is, is that appropriate? And, you know, I think there's two schools of thought, you know, obviously that I'm hearing, you know, so I, I need your recommendation on whether or not that that's at a high level, should, should an affordable housing project go to the top of the list on a building permit review, or should it go in line with everything else? That's, that's one consideration. Well, well, typically building a house is carrying costs. And if I'm building a house, John Doe's, not me, but any resident in Harper Springs is building a house. He's got interest rates, construction costs, everything that they're, that they've got to pay every month until they get the permit or their, their, their financing. And it's fundamentally unfair for them to be financially impacted more so because a developer is coming right. in and building multiple affordable housing units and his project gets put on the top shelf at the, at the detriment of, of John exactly. Doe, taxpayer, who's trying to build a house. Let the counties and the cities that need and have the space for more development incentivize these developers. Why are we incentive? They, if they want this, what we have, that they're going to take it. They they are the Live Local Act gives them that opportunity. Why are we trying to incentivize them with the less than 10% less we have for development? Make them work for it if they want it so bad. Why are we doing that? They, they, want, they can do it. You've, you made it clear in the last meeting. They don't even have to go to the TRC. They have 10 days. There's other counties and cities that, that get the millions of dollars that pass that, that is available to these, you know, was it 5.1, $7 million that these developers are, that have to spend? And there's tons of places that, that need and have all the space to build. I, we I have limited want, I space. I just want to be fair across the board, regardless if the developer is going to build affordable housing <coughs> or John Doe taxpayer wants to build a house, the process should not <coughs> deviate. I think and they haven't got into the building permits that they're going to give out. They're going to start giving the permits away to incentivize those. And we're going to, and That's individuals why have to pay for them, but the developers won't because we're going to incentivize them to come here. And that all eventually comes back on the taxpayer. Is, is there a consensus on the board to follow Mr. Kaskudis' recommendation on the old 1.4.2? Yes. 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 And we're going and, and striking especially affordable housing. Right. <coughs> Do you want? No, I think we no, said comma including. Including. Right. right. Yeah. Including. Okay. Including. Yeah, we don't All right. look like we're excluding. Got it. <laughs> it's still there. But. <coughs> It's okay. better than especially yeah. it prioritizes. Right. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think including is any different. No, it's supposed to be included already. So it should be included already. Uh, because without putting, it, it, doesn't, right. it doesn't do them any good to just, if I they don't get the special. Here so minute, so just keep it. It, it, it should be included already. <laughs> I hear it, because I'm, I'm seeing that this is just a general housing element. Exactly. Or just say, uh, add, add the, in front of, right after the word four. <coughs> no, all house. No, just houses. housing, period. All includes everything. Well, you don't need to put a word all. It, it's, it's implied. Uh, well, we're, we're taking out affordable housing, so it's in a way. It, and housing is housing. <coughs> yeah. It's a man, <coughs> but. 
You're coming at it from it, just it a supply and demand them, process. That's exactly what you said. It's putting them ahead of everybody else. That's the whole reason for the change. And by taking it away or even calling it including, it takes away their proposed. They, they well, don't, the they existing language it. is slanted toward affordable housing. Right. That's yes. right. So then right. why do we have to make it especially? So that's why I just, I, you know, my but recommendation is the period after housing and leave, mm -hmm. let it go. If the entire thing is about affordable housing, why does it have to be especially? That doesn't make any sense. Or, or I mean, we could go back to, to what it's changed to and just say develop an expedited review process for yeah, all housing for all applications. All applications. For all housing. That's fine take too. the affordable out. Take affordable out. Yeah. I mean, I could do, I can live with that. I, I like it. I like that. Yeah. All right. For all, <laughs> all housing applications. And even the next one, 5.2, same thing. They're, they're evaluating to offset it. Okay, I, I, it, getting rid of impact fees for every, all housing Overall. is just not, no. that's not really feasible. It doesn't say, say get rid of it, it says it's to offset it's impact fees. It's to offset impact mm -hmm. fees, permit fees, inspection fees, it's to lower overall housing. Well, it just says to lower all overall housing construction costs. It doesn't say affordable. It doesn't say affordable, so. Uh, for you, this is for affordable housing, yeah. so sorry, Mike. <laughs> this is pretty much talking about but all this, forms of housing. But this it's, one, it's, the it's way it reads, is everything. So. Yeah, it just says to lower overall housing construction costs, so that's that's overall. I find that less problematic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To to give somebody a break for affordable housing, but don't hurt my process in waiting to get the permit. Right. Right. Well, and and the other sort of thing, and it, it's just. To, this gets into the details of how you do it, but I think there probably are people who are trying to build their own affordable houses that need every <laughs> a, bit of help. It's a fair, that, it's a fair statement. That it really they can is. get and and <laughs> providing them with a navigator to help them through the process right. or something might be the best idea. But there's no need to help a developer who's building a multi-million dollar complex. Right. He knows what he's doing. Next page. What is this? I don't see that the city, this, the, the top one on that page doesn't have a objective, so I guess we just <coughs> oh. read, read the it's, uh, it's at the bottom. No, it's at the bottom of which is under objective 1.5. Oh. 1.5.6 is on the, <coughs> the policy numbers on the previous page. Oh, okay, I see it, okay. I'm okay with that language. Oh. Yeah, that's Opposed. innocuous. Simple. Let's go. Let me know if it's <coughs> 1.7.1. What? <laughs> You're working ahead again. Where are you at? This stuff that you changed, Renee, recently. I, 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 I know some things I want to talk I'm about. I'm sorry. Is the, the, other, I don't have much of an issue with. The mobile home 1.7, uh, is that something you really revisited? Because sure. I know we've discussed <laughs> it in the original, um, like the very first the meeting. With the consult with the workshop, right. one point mobile seven. Home. Yeah, it's that that that's for mobile home communities, yeah. I suspect. Yeah. One point oh. seven one. Yeah, that's what I wanted to make sure. One point seven one for mobile home communities. If a developer was to come in and acquire mobile home park, please keep doing something else with it. Is that what the purpose this is? To protect them from that. Is that point seven point one? Okay, so why don't hold we on. Say that? Hold on. Everybody's talking at once, and I'm <clears throat> so. So the original one point seven one. Continue to support mobile home parks and mixed use residential areas. That's the original policy. Yours. It doesn't say that, though. Okay. The original well, language the doesn't say that. No, this is. It only language. talks about displaced persons. Yeah. yeah. They're on the new 171. 171, the new 171. Yeah. Ensure adequate mobile homes or housing is available for relocation uh, needs uh, prior to the issuance uh, of the development order. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. That was, that was to protect mobile home residents. Yes, 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 it was. That's something it, that yes. was added since the original workshop, because I know we discussed it in like the first one or two workshops. Yeah, yeah it's, just a, it's just a reworded existing policy. I think we just... Yeah, but the existing policy had mobile home listed as a, the, the cause. And, and, yeah. Or the item, yeah. <clears throat> and you propose one seven one point seven point one, just calls yeah. it 
ensure that adequate housing is available um, for um, relocation um, needs. So the original 1.5.2 is simply speaking to, in a redevelopment situation, ensuring that adequate housing is available. Then why in are we relocation. changing? The, oh, I see. What, we're just changing the, the number changed. Yeah, the number sorry. Changed. Um, Mr. Chairman, how late do you want to go this evening? Because before we get into like hip deep into the mobile home stuff, it might be a good. <laughs> might be be a good place. Yeah, because yeah, we got more to go like, in this but, section uh, than we've done so far. So, so yeah, we'll be ten o'clock or after to try to finish this. A fair assumption. Tackle it again on the twenty fifth. Yeah, please make sure you remember to bring your materials to the workshop, so. Yeah. 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 Yes, uh, they, they've taken my your gavel away. Meeting adjourned. We're adjourned. The Vietnamese.